What's up, green team? Today is the big day. Today we are talking about part five of six, securing a listing. This is the big day where we have to go present to the sellers to present our marketing plan and our customized marketing report for their property, which is going to get us the listing, get us a signed contract so we can get paid commission uh, and sell their house for them. So today is the most important lesson that you can learn as a realtor. Uh, the skill set that we are covering today is the skill set that separates good realtors from the best and the ones that generate long-term careers um, with significant salaries that they make for themselves because they can win in these uh, potential listing opportunity situations. So again, we are on part five of six of securing a listing. Today, we're conducting listing appointment step two. And this is kind of what we're going to cover here. Uh, we're going to go through presenting doors, finalizing the marketing plan, discussing property access, setting up a communication plan, and dealing with objections. So now you've got your doors presentation ready. You've got your price trend analysis. You've got your listing docs. You're ready to walk into the door um, and blow them away with your customized marketing plan that you have for their property. And first off, we're going to sit down at the kitchen table. We're going to open up our doors presentation and we are going to blow their minds with how much effort and work we have put into preparing their marketing plan for their property and how much different we are than every other realtor they've ever met or heard from uh, because we go above and beyond with what we do. So let's talk about presenting doors. Uh, in a past video, we already talked about uh, actually building your doors presentation um, and practicing some of the dialogue. So I won't go over that again. Uh, but I do want to go through just a couple of things. Uh, again, when you're presenting doors, you can download that PDF to your laptop. Most people are presenting it that way um, nowadays. So you can do that. You can also do a paper version if that's just what you prefer. But what you really need to watch, um, if you go into Weikert uh, Tools and Weikert University, and let me go back a couple steps here so you can see where I'm at. Um, so at the front, of Weikert University, sorry, I'll just start here for you. At the front of Weikert University, right up at the top, presenting the doors listing presentation. This is the package you need to watch. You have to watch this. This isn't a, uh, you should, or it'd be better. You have to watch this series of videos if you're going to be good at your doors listing presentation. Um, and when listing presentations get competitive, and especially when you're doing like things like relocation presentations and you got to another realtor on the other side that's maybe more experienced or knows more, this will set you apart. And even if you're just a couple of years into real estate, you'll be able to beat 10 or 20 year veterans because you will have your listing presentation down. So if you go into presenting the doors listing presentation, you can go to content. There's step-by-step -step videos down here that will take you through the different sections of doors um, so that you know what to say in each section. You've got to watch these. You've got to practice. You've got to turn them into your own words. You have to say them enough to where it's so comfortable and rolls off the tongue that you're not memorizing or confused when you sit down at this listing presentation. Um, you are showing up ready to go and you are going to be there to impress the sellers. So watch these videos. The second thing I would urge is to go to this website, which is go to stage.com slash channel slash Weikert webinars, where we keep all our Weikert webinars. And if you scroll down a little bit, this will move uh, depending on how many new videos have come out. But about halfway down the page, you'll see the doors listing presentation, part one and two. These are both about 45 minutes to an hour. And they are great in terms of the exact dialogue, the exact pages. You wanna go through these um, at least monthly. Um, one of these videos kind of keep uh, in the top of mind so that you are ready to go when you go into this doors presentation. It might be a good idea just to listen to the video the night before you've got a presentation the next day, um, just to keep everything fresh in your mind. You know what to say and you don't feel like you're put on the spot at the presentation. So the key to presenting a great doors presentation is the practice, putting it in your word, own words and being comfortable with it. The second thing you want to present is we really need to present a timeline of what we're doing when we're marketing. Now, this can vary realtor to realtor, uh, but we do have examples on the drive. I can show you here so you see where I'm at. I'm under WRCOK, office, planning, and then listing marketing plans. You can see some people have edited uh, their own custom ones in here, uh, but there's a make copy before editing one that you can look at. Um, please make a copy before you edit, edit it and make it your own. Uh, but here is kind of, 
a, a plan to sell your house, which I like to go through with each uh, seller once I get done with the listing presentation. Sometimes I send it to people ahead of time. If I'm in a competitive situation, I need them to understand how much different I am than every other realtor. It's kind of the bullet points of the doors presentation um, and kind of um, impresses people with what we're going to do before the MLS, before we go under contract, and then before closing. Uh, and then there's a second page, and I think this is super valuable, especially for new realtors trying to figure out what they're supposed to do when they are selling a house. These timelines are built off the listing date. So T minus zero is list date. So T minus seven is a week before we list it. Uh, so if you go through these advice changes you may want to make, uh, then five days, we're going to order professional photos. The two days before, we're going to coordinate the photo shoot. Um, we're going to order just listed mailers. We're going to post social media content one day before with coming soon, which is in line with the MLS rules. Um, and you guys can see it's taking you day by day all the way to three days after we list it. So this kind of opens up people's eyes and seller's eyes to, oh, you're not just putting a sign in my yard. You're not just uh, going to hope that someone comes and buys it from the MLS. Another realtor brings a buyer. You're actually working this whole time and you've actually got a plan that works. This is what really impresses people. So you give your doors presentation. Uh, sometimes I put this as part of my leave behind and I say, here's, here's the specific day. So you know exactly what I'm doing on each day for your property. Uh, you will know what I'm working on and we'll be able to talk about. So that's really valuable. And again, you may adjust this because you have, may, may have a little different way you like to do things, which is great. The key is have a plan and have it down to the number of days that you're doing stuff uh, so that everyone's on the same page when you're selling a house. Next up, we're going to go through something that sometimes gets missed at the uh, second step of the listing presentation. Uh, you got to make sure you discuss property access. This isn't something you want to forget. So make sure you ask them about having a key to the front door, uh, making sure that it's okay to put a lockbox on the front door, uh, explain to them how the lockbox works, that it's actually something that each realtor has an app on their phone. They unlock it. We get notification of which realtor opened the box so that we have a record of who's been in the house uh, for their safety um, and also for knowledge for feedback purposes. So make sure we get this information worked out that you've got the key, you got the lockbox, you really should get a key from them, an extra key, go make three copies and bring back their extra key. Um, two of the copies go to the office just in case we need them for some reason. And then one goes into the lockbox. Then you'll want to discuss alarms. You want to figure out if they're going to have alarms on while people are trying to enter the property. In general, that's a little bit challenging for realtors um, when there are especially a lot of showings back to back and we're dealing with alarms, trying to turn it on, trying to turn it off. It's a little bit tricky. Uh, but you want to discuss what they're comfortable with. Again, it's their house, so it's their decision. But you want to explain to them some of the uh, concerns if you are dealing with alarms and people potentially setting them off just so they know what they may be going through. And then the other thing is gates. If they have a security gate at the front of the neighborhood, we're going to need access to it somehow. So we're either going to need a code or something uh, we call or something we can tell realtors how to get to the property. So make sure you discuss property access when you're at the doors present, when you're doing your step two of your listing presentation uh, in the doors. This is a really good thing to bring up uh, anytime you're talking to potentially a for sale by owner also, because they may not have realized that property access is such a big deal and who's in their house and how safe it really is. The next thing we want to bring up is we got to set up a communication plan during this appointment. The number one thing that people complain about realtors Clients who have realtors, the number one thing they complain about is communication, a lack of communication, uh, inconsistent communication, unclear communication. So we've got to fix that and we got to do it right at this point. If you set up this communication plan, you don't have anything to worry about. So you're going to talk about, okay, each time we have a showing, here's how it's going to go. We're going to do the showing. We're going to give them 24 hours to get us feedback. Uh, sometimes they're showing a bunch of houses. It's complicated, so we always give 24 hours for feedback, but then if I don't get it in that 24 hours, I'm going to follow up with that realtor and make sure that I get feedback about what those buyers think, and I will pass that along as I get it. Uh, second, we're going to do a marketing update. Each week, I'm going to call in to you. Uh, we're going to set up a time that works for both of us, and each week, I'm going to call in, and I'm going to let you know what marketing we've been doing, uh, what kind of results, what kind of reach, what kind of reactions we've been getting, uh, so we can do a full marketing update each week. Um, including open houses, uh, social promotion, web promotion, things like that. And third, I want to talk about when we get an offer, how would you like me to let you know? Do you want me to send you a text that says, hey, we got an offer, let me know 
when you want to discuss it on the phone? Do you want me just to call you when we get the offer? Would you prefer me to email it to you? And then you tell me when you're, you've read through it so we can talk about it. What, which way would you like that offer to go? We need to communicate this up front so that everyone's on the same page on when offers start coming in. This is super important because we want to make sure that our sellers feel like they are in control of the communication because this is their house, their property, they're paying you, uh, you're working for them. So they need to be the ones to set uh, what they're comfortable with in communication. And the great part is if you let them set it, it becomes something that they are in charge of and not something that they're necessarily complaining about or feeling uh, like you've let them down in some way because together you have set your communication plan from the very start. So make sure you discuss these three things um, and how you're going to communicate them. For instance, when Lauren and I set up uh, with a seller, especially if they're, say they're a married couple, we immediately at this appointment, when we're leaving, we set up a group text with all four of us on it so that we all know, hey, if you need something about the property, make sure we put it in here so that everyone sees it just in case uh, so we don't miss someone or someone gets left out or doesn't know something going on. So we set up that group text that day at that appointment so that we're all on the same page. It's a great way to get everybody set up. And I think it's a great idea, even if you're selling on your own uh, and you're maybe working with a married couple, set up a three-person group text right at that time and say, hey, here we go. Um, but maybe it's one of the, uh, maybe it's a husband and wife and the husband doesn't really want to be kept in the loop. He just wants the wife to be kept in the loop. That's great. Now we've got a plan. And I know that I'm not going to upset anyone by not communicating to all parties involved. Um, so make sure you set this plan clearly up at the front and it'll make your life way easier and it'll make you look a lot better doing your job. The third thing we want to make sure we cover are the old objections. So the dream scenarios, you go into for your doors presentation, you present everything, uh, you give your marketing plan and they're ready to sign the listing agreement. They sign it, boom, you're ready to go. Everyone's got a communication plan, a marketing plan and we're ready to go, photos are in a few days, um, and everything's great. But sometimes you're going to run into some awkward road bumps, and I want to talk about how we're going to deal with that. So number one, and the scariest thing I think for most realtors, especially new realtors, is a commission objection, which means um, our office standard is a 6% listing commission, and maybe the seller says, well, is that uh, fixed, or are you flexible, or um, are you willing to come down on that any? Uh, there's a lot of ways they can say it, but what they're really asking you is to give up some of your commission. Now, the key to not getting asked this a lot is by giving a great doors presentation and making the sellers feel and understand the value that you are offering them and selling their home. Uh, they need to understand how valuable you are because they will not bring up this uh, commission objection. So the key is avoiding commission objections by doing the work up front, by putting together a great plan, presenting it uh, in a very professional manner to communicate and show your value to the sellers. If you can eliminate the question, you don't have to deal with it. Now, if you do have to deal with it, the key is to be strong on it, to know your worth and know your value. Uh, you've got to be strong here. And this is the point where you have everything in the world to gain from this uh, listing. So you need to make sure that you are, you're going to be firm and you understand that you're worth it and you're worth that 6%. Um, you can explain to them that 3% of it goes to the buyer's agent, 3% will go to the listing agent, which is you. Um, and that's how commission works. And that's our office standard. And then you move right on to the next thing on the list. Um, no need to leave it open or discuss it a bunch. You want to get it handled and you want to get it handled right up front, right here um, and get it done. One thing I'll mention, if you tell them at this point, which I don't recommend, that there is some different commission uh, if you get the buyer also, if you end up with both sides of the transaction, that has to be disclosed and that has to be disclosed in the MLS also as a variable dual rate uh, when you list the property. So keep that in mind. Again, I don't recommend doing that because you're going to do just as much work, maybe even more um, if you end up with both sides. There's no point in uh, reducing your commission in that scenario. Second, showings in open houses. What if the sellers don't want uh, a lot of showings or they only give you two hours a week to do showings? The key is, again, this is their property, their house, their money. Our job is to explain the consequences, the possible consequences they may be dealing with. So if they only allow two hours of showings, hey, you're missing out on a lot of potential buyers. 
uh, just want to keep you keep in mind it but at the end it's their decision to make uh, same thing with open houses we don't do open houses we don't like open houses well let me explain to you we've sold five open houses in the last month in our office just from people walking into open houses if you do more open houses more of those showings will come during the open house more people see it then instead of having to leave your house 10 times in a row those 10 people may come to the open house uh, so it's a two-hour block where we knock them all out at one time uh, explain the convenience and then explain the consequences and then let them make their decision once they make their decision that's what we're going to move forward with and third is pricing um, so what if they say we think the house should be uh, listed at a higher price than what you have in your price trend analysis and what the market shows. What we wanna do again is take ourselves out of this discussion. It's not an opinion between the seller and us on what their house is worth. That's not the discussion and you'll never win that discussion. The discussion is here is what the market shows the house should sell for. That's what we're presenting. We're presenting an objective, a, a objective view of market data to show what their house will sell for. Stay in that frame of mind, not a subjective, well, I think I know more than you. Well, I do this for a living, so I think I know. That's not what we're doing. We're just showing them the objective data from the market to show what the house should sell for. And then they, again, it's their house, it's their money. So they get to make that decision in the end. Uh, but we have to come from objective, objective point of view because we have to justify what we did. And another way to attack that is, this is how an appraiser would look at this house. If someone's getting a loan, they'll need an appraisal and the appraisal will have to come in at a certain amount for them to be able to get the loan. Uh, so that's a great way to explain a pricing model and a great way to handle a pricing objection. But the key again is to work from a, an objective point of view because the last thing you wanna do is, I don't think it'll sell that high. They get you to agree to the higher amount and it sells for that high and you look like you have no idea what you're doing. So don't do that, don't risk that, be objective, Point at the market data and then explain that things happen, but this is what the market shows the house should sell for. If you do these three big areas while you're doing your doors presentation and your marketing plan, you will give a great doors presentation and you will get listings and win listings. And that's what real estate's all about. And once we win the listing, we've got some work to do before it hits the MLS. And that's what we're going to do in the next video. See you guys over there.